In this video, we're going to demo doing inference on one numerical variable. The data come from a survey on Duke students, and the variable of interest in the, is the number of colleges these students apply to. So let's start by uploading the data set. It's a CSV file that I locate on my computer. And once it's uploaded, I can see it in the Files pane in the RStudio window. The next step is going to be importing the data set into my workspace so that it's usable for the analysis. I want to make sure that the heading button is checked with yes because the first row of the data set is actually a header, not actual data. Once I click import, I can see the data set in a spreadsheet format um, up here. We can see that the name of the data file is Duke, the name of the variable is schools applied, for example, the first student. Each row represents a student here. The first student applied to six schools, the second one applied to one school. And we can also see that some students chose to not answer this question about the number of schools they applied to. So in order for us to continue with our inference, we need to first figure out what's the research question. College Board website states that counselors recommend that students apply to roughly eight colleges. Do these data provide evidence that Duke students on average apply to more than eight colleges? We can answer this question using a hypothesis test, and we've been doing those using the inference function, so let's load that onto our workspace as well. Once the function is loaded, you'll be able to see it in your workspace on the right-hand side. The function works as such. First type the function name, and then as usual, input my arguments into the function in parentheses. The first variable is the data of interest, and that's Duke dollar sign schools applied. The estimate that I'm interested in is a mean, so I'm going to use an estimate of mean. I want to do a hypothesis test. My null value is eight, since my null hypothesis would say that on average Duke students apply to eight colleges, and the alternative would say that Duke students on average apply to more than eight colleges. Let's start with a theoretical method. We can see that we're doing inference on a single mean. Our summary statistics suggest that the observed mean for this sample is 9.71. The standard deviation is roughly seven, so these students on average apply to 9.71 colleges, give or take seven. And the number of observations included in the analysis is 206. That's slightly less than 218. And that means that we had 12 students who didn't actually respond to this question. Our null hypothesis is that the true average is equal to eight. The alternative is that the true average is greater than eight. The inference function will calculate the standard error for us and using that, we'll calculate the test statistic. We're using a Z statistic here because we're doing inference on means. We have independent data if we are to assume that these students are randomly sampled. The sample size is greater than 30, and the distribution of the, do, of the data do not appear to be extremely skewed. This is not a nearly normal distribution, but it's certainly not really skewed either. With a large Z statistic of 3.5, remember it's pretty unlikely to observe data that's more than three standard deviations away from the mean, and this observation happens to be more than 3.5 standard deviations away from the mean, our p-value is pretty small. And we can see that the shaded area under the normal curve is pretty small. With such a small p-value, we can reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative and conclude that, Duke student, that these data provide evidence that Duke students on average apply to more than eight colleges. We can also easily do a confidence interval with this function. All I need to change is the type argument from HT for hypothesis test to CI for a confidence interval. And a 95% confidence interval suggests that we are 95% confident that Duke students on average apply to 8.76 to 10.67 colleges. This agrees with our earlier hypothesis test since the entire interval lies above our null value. The function also allows us to do simulation-based inference. For example, let's start with the confidence interval here. All I need to do is to change the method from theoretical to simulation, and the function will construct a bootstrap interval. 
Remember, this means that we're taking bootstrap samples from the original sample, in other words, samples of size 206 with replacement, recording the means of these simulated samples, and building a bootstrap distribution. The bootstrap confidence interval is pretty similar to the theoretical confidence interval calculated earlier. And to complete the story, we can also um, do a hypothesis test using simulation methods. And in the case of one numerical variable, this simply means shifting the center of the bootstrap distribution over to the null value so that the center is at 8 and calculating the number of simulations where the, observe, where the simulated mean was greater than or equal to the observed mean. You can see that the observed mean seems pretty like a pretty unusual observation in this randomization distribution and the p-value is pretty small. So all of these methods agree with each other. Finally, let's demo how we could include all of this analysis in our write-up. In my RMD file, I need to first input some information about my project. And after some text, I want to make sure that I'm reading the data file in. And I'm also including the inference function. And finally, I can include in the inference section my analysis for a theoretical inference as well as simulation inference. And once I hit knit, I should be able to see that all of the output that we discussed before appears in my report. So all I need to do now is to add the text to go with it, add some exploratory data analysis, add some interpretations, and write up a conclusion, and I'm done with my project. I hope that this has been useful for doing inference in R, in R for one numerical variable.